How's it going, everybody? I'm Drifty from Driftwood Gaming. Welcome back to Learning RPG Maker MZ. In this tutorial, I'm going to go over action sequencing as quick as possible. Here's what you're going to need in your plugin manager. You're going to need Visu Stella MZ0 Core Engine plugin. And then underneath that, you're going to need the Visu Stella MZ1 Battle Core plugin. That's pretty much it. And then we're going to go to our common events and we're going to select a new common event. Change your maximum if you have to. Make some space. We're going to call this one Action Sequence Tutorial. You don't need a trigger. You don't need any switches or anything because you're just going to call this common event from a skill. I'll show you after we make it. So the entire process is going to take place much differently than it did in MV. In MZ, action sequences are all done in common events through plugin commands. So go to the contents of a common event, go to tab three, click on plugin command under the advanced section, and then we're going to select the battle core. When you've selected the battle core, a list of options will populate the command name drop down menu. You're usually not going to use all of these things in every sequence. Most sequences are just short bursts of small things that happen. But if we take it one step at a time and we look at some things that we have to do, ignore a lot of the things that we don't have to do just to make a sequence, then we can make this pretty quick and easy. So the first thing that you're going to have to do is a setup action. So we're going to do setup action set right here at the first one. And we're going to leave everything to default for now. But you can look at these more in detail if you wanted to. We're going to do the same thing again. We're going to add another plugin command. Click on Battle Core, and then we're going to select. Let's play an animation when we use our skill. So we're going to go here to Animation, Show Animation. We need to change the target if we wanted to, unless we wanted it to apply to all targets. To do that, you just double click and double click, and then you have a drop down menu. We're going to change this to the user. And you can see all of the parameters you can set in here and they will play the animation on different things. But we're gonna select the user for this tutorial. Animation ID, if you double click it, you can click on these three dots and you're given a option to view your animations, which is pretty cool. We can give it an animation. If you want it to mirror, if you're playing it on the other side of the screen, you can choose that. If you want it to wait for this to happen, you can say true. Otherwise, you, uh, if you want it to play the animation but continue the sequence, then you're gonna set that to false. We're gonna pay attention to wait for animation and wait for camera and all of the weights. That's what's gonna help us time everything perfectly. What's good about doing this inside a common event is that it acts just like a common event would you can do all kinds of other things inside of your action sequence like manual weights so we can input a manual weight of three four or five frames or whatever we want when we want it to be put there which we're going to do at some point another thing that every action sequence is going to have to have is a finish action so let's go to page three under advanced plugin command let's select another battle core plugin command and we are going to apply a finish action at the very end and what this is going to do is undo all of the things that the startup action did. It's going to remove the boxes, put everyone back where they're supposed to be, clear the results, wait for everything to move where it's supposed to be, turn off a mortal so that creatures can die after being issued damage, etc. But we don't want to do anything after that. So this is the end. If you look at this common event right now, it's really not going to do anything. It's not going to issue any damage. All it's going to do is show an animation and wait. So what we want to do is have it issue some damage and maybe input some motions or something. So we're going to just add another plugin command for that. Here's a good combination of things that can happen. Let's jump the target and we're going to say this target's going to go 300 pixels into the air. The user will go that far. We're not going to make it wait for it, so we're going to jump and have other things happen after that as well. After we float the user, we're going to move them to the target. So we're going to go move to targets. We're going to select the target that's moving is the user, and the destination will be our current target. We're going to leave most of these things default. So now we have a startup action, an animation will play, the user will jump and move to the target, but what else should happen? What we should have happen is an action effect. At this point, we want to do a motion and have the user pull out their weapon. So we'll do a motion type and we'll say on the user, they're going to use their attack motion showing the weapon. Now they're showing their weapon, they're right in front of the target, do the action effect. And the action effect is going to issue the damage or do whatever the damage formula says on the current target. And that'll pretty much do it. If we wanted to do a dual attack, well, first of all, let's look at this. In order to view and test our action sequence, we have to attach it to a skill. So let's look at how to do that. Let's create a new skill. 
One thing that's important to keep in mind is the scope, which has been changed since MV. So we have some more options in the scope and it's important to tie your scope to match what your action sequence says, or you're gonna have some wonky results. For example, if you're targeting just one enemy here, but then in your action sequence, you tell it to do something to all targets, you might get weird results. Vice versa, if you have it target all allies, but then you're telling it to do something on a single target in the action sequence, you might get some weird results. Maybe that's something you wanna play with to see what can happen. Now. In order to tie the action sequence to this skill, we need to put a note tag in the note box. And that note tag should look like this, custom action sequence. And finally, the last step is to attach which action sequence you want it to call. Add a common event to the effects box of your skill in order to reference that as the skill that you're calling as a custom action sequence. After all that, you can just give that skill to one of your characters and test it in game. So here we have the test action sequence and let's take a look at it. Cool. It's pretty fast. We can add some weights in there. If we wanted to add a second attack, we could do that as well. All we have to do is input more motions, animations, and effects. Essentially, all we need to do is add effects, but what we wanna do is add some delay along with them. You have a little bit of a manual weight in between action effect. That way, all the damage doesn't just appear at the same time, it's more like Let's have the user move behind the target and hit them again. So we've added another plugin command to move to targets, except this time we're going to change the target location. We're gonna double click on that in the drop down. we have options to change where do we move to. Let's say back center. So now we're gonna move to the back center. Another thing needs to happen if we do this, not necessarily, but like I think if I wanted to make the character spin or turn around, I would input another plugin command to make the character reverse its draw position. That's in here too, under the face direction. And we're gonna have the user face backwards. The user comes in, lands a hit, and then faces backwards does another action effect. We'll copy paste our motion type. There's our action effect. So we put a couple of weights in here to allow the damages to pop up individually, not at the same time. Let's see how this looks. Let's take a look at it now. Test action sequence, go. Oh, bam, bam. Cool. Very nice. And as long as you include the finish action at the end, no matter where you leave them, they'll go back to where they're supposed to be. There's one caveat to, the, to that finish action. I don't believe that it changes your float back to zero. In the instance that you're floating your target, your finish action will not unfloat your target, in which case you'll have to go in here and manually set the plugin command to float the character again, except when you float them, you're gonna set them to a float of zero. To bring your user back down, if they're floating, you do a move float desired height of zero, and then that will bring the user back down to where they need to be. Of course, we didn't float the user. I just wanted to include that. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. If you did find it helpful, give it a thumbs up, like, favorite, share, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Back us on Patreon if you'd like to do that. We'd appreciate it. Come join us on the Discord. Links in the description below. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.